Hi, in this video we're going to calculate the energy and cost savings um, and under different rate structures and how the method that you do, um, that you use to calculate these things really affects the answers. So just a heads up, in this video we're going to really cover the results and we're going to cover a little bit of how the results are gotten. But the really um, intense calculations that are done in Excel, I'm going to save for the next video. So if you remember, um, in one of my previous videos, I showed a graph um, like this. So this is actually some real data from a school um, in Delaware. And at one point, their average electric cost per kilowatt hour jumped. So, um, and if you, we dig a little deeper into the data, we really see that it was that the total power charges really jumped, um, you know, a lot in this case. So, um, what we're going to do is really explore these two bills in depth and see how these two different rate structures can really lead to a um, drastically different cost for this school, as well as see how um, if we were to implement ECMs, that these two rate structures could really give us um, drastically different cost savings. So let's go ahead and um, you know look at what happened here first. So if we look at the first bill, so the bill that is this first line with the high power charges, um, they were being charged um, for de delivery and supply from um, from the power company themselves. There wasn't a third party supplier. So um, if we look at the power charges first. Um, we add up all the different power charges here and divide by the 189 kilowatts. We get $19, um, more than $19 per kilowatt, which is actually pretty expensive. Um, and we can see the big, the big portion of that's really this $14 here in the supply charges. Okay, so let's go to the next one. The energy charge for this bill is actually pretty low. It's a little, it's less than five cents. So again, we use these two numbers and we divide by the total amount of kilowatt hours. Great, so now let's look um, at another way to calculate this, and this is, hopefully I'll convince you by the end of this video, this is not the way you want to do it. So um, we really do not want to calculate um, electricity charges this way, but some um, energy auditing firms still do it this way, and some solar firms still do it this way as well. So if we just take the total kilowatt hour and the total um, charges and divide the charges by the kilowatt hour, we get almost 19 cents per kilowatt hour. And that's sometimes called a blended rate. So as you can see, bill number one has very high power charges, relatively low energy charges, and the blended rate um, is, is relatively high as well. So let's go ahead on to bill number two. So in this one, you can see that there's a third party that provides it. And it's not on the same page, but I just snipped it so we could see it all in one slide of all the electric charges. So the cost per kilowatt's gone way down to $4.32. The um, cost per kilowatt hour actually has gone up to almost $0.08 cents a kilowatt hour. And the blended rate right now, if we do use that as our calculation, again, don't really do this. It's um, $0.9.3 cents per kilowatt hour. Okay, so now let's just compare this. So the, the school changed the rate structure basically from these, these months where it had a really high power charge um, and a relatively low energy charge and flipped it. So that way um, in rate structure number two, it had a higher energy charge, but a lower power charge. So really the question is, why does this matter? What effect would it have on energy conservation measures or the amount that's paid for electricity in general? So, um, so that's what we want to really figure out the rest of this uh, video. So like I said, there's calculations involved with all of these things. And I'm not going to go deep into the calculations in this video, but leave that to another one. So you can access the spreadsheet um, at the link in this, in this slide. So um, and I want to just note that I didn't include any demand ratchet or um, anything like that in these calculations, just for simplicity purposes. But to do this correctly, you may have to include a demand ratchet. All right, so if we just look at the cost of electricity, if because I had the and the the short of it is that with this spreadsheet, I had the hourly 
um, actually 15 minute um, consumption data of the school. So I use that to calculate the cost of electricity in rate structure number one. And if I do it with using the energy and power charges, which is the correct way to do it, I get 69,000. If I use it doing, if I use the blended rate, I get 93,000. So you can see this is a huge difference. And um, you know that's why we really want to use the ener power and energy charges and not the blended rate. Do the same thing with number two. There's not as big of a difference with the blended rate, but in this case, the blended rate's actually lower. So that's why you always want to really use the power and energy charges and never the blended rate. Because it can make a huge difference when you're evaluating whether or not to stay on um, one rate or another. And you can see the school actually did a really good um, change because their energy charges for the year, or their, their, their ele utility electric charges for the year, were almost 70 grand if they had stayed on that um, first bill rate structure. And now they reduced it to 50 grand. That's a $20,000 savings from just a phone call to the utility company. It's pretty powerful. Okay. So now we're going to see that's the difference of the different rate structures on the total utility cost. So now what we're going to do is really um, look at the two different energy conservation measures and how they calculate differently using different methods. So the two measures we're going to do are actually very similar. They're an indoor lighting change and an outdoor lighting change. The only thing that we're going to change is the hours that we're reducing this 5 kilowatt um, of lighting. So for the indoor, we're just going to change from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And for the outdoor lighting, we're just going to change from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. So you can see they're both a four-hour change and a five kilowatt reduction. So um, really, we're saving the same amount of energy in both of these energy conservation measures. Um, so so that's, so that's one thing we can see. Okay, so there's three sort of methods to this. We could first use the blended rate. Again, this is not a good way to do it. I'll show, show the calculations on the slides. Um, the second way is less accurate, um, but we could just say, okay, assume the peak load always occurs during regular hours. And actually, um, there's a bit of a mistake here. We're going to say that the peak load occurs actually during 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. all the time. And then number three is to actually reduce the usage from your interval data. And again, I'll show that in a separate presentation or a separate video. Okay, so method number two basically says that every single um, kilowatt reduction, we're going to have, um, that. It's, so it's going to save 60 kilowatts per year. And then the kilowatt hour reduction is... Um, is 5 kilowatts times 4 hours a day times 365 days a year. So we save 7,300 kilowatt hours per year. So for the indoor lighting, we're going to save both of these. And for the outdoor, we're only going to save this one because we don't save any peak with the outdoor. So that's, that's if we did method number two, and that's basically if we didn't have any interval data. So when we actually go through in Excel and reduce these kilowatts during the times that I mentioned, and then do the peak and look at the peak power reduction, in some months we do get that full five kilowatts. So for example, in April, July, November, and December, we get the full five kilowatts. But in some months, we don't get any kilowatt reduction. So this is, you have to be very careful when you use, when you assume that you're getting a full kilowatt reduction with uh, ECMs like this. So in this case, we have 60 kilowatts per year. And the total savings that actually, so remember, method number three is the most exact. The actual savings we're getting in peak kilowatts is 24.68. And you can also see that we're not getting any kilowatt reduction from outdoor lighting. So that is a good assumption. All right, so now let's look at um, method number one using the blended rate, what our energy savings would be. So again, with the blended rate, we don't even care about peak kilowatts. We multiply by... The, the blended rate. So it was 19 cents per kilowatt hour for um, rate structure number one and about nine cents per kilowatt hour for rate structure number two. So that's the savings we get using the blended um, blended rate. And again, this is not what you want to do. So now this is sort of quick um, and we don't need interval data for it, but it's less accurate. So this is assuming that we save this full 60 kilowatts per year with the indoor lighting. Um, that our peak in indoor, the indoor lights is somewhere between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. 
Okay, so that's why this, these indoor ones include the peak charges, the 60 kilowatts per year, and then multiply by the, um, you know, the peak charges for that rate structure. And then the outdoor ones don't include the 60 kilowatts per year. So we get those, those numbers as our result, and you can go ahead and look at my math a little closely if you want. Okay, and again, this is the calculation in Excel, um, actually reducing it during those hours and looking at the peaks. And like I said, I'll go over that in, in another video. All right, so let's look at the results. So this is the really interesting part. So the first thing um, you know to notice is that um, method three is the most accurate. So should we compare? We should compare all of our results to method number three. That's the big thing to notice. The other thing to notice is that, um, you know, rate structure number one for the indoor lights gives a bigger savings in method number three. And for the outdoor lights gives a less savings. And this is because, remember, this gives more preference to those peak time periods and the indoor lights sometimes reduce the peak. So that's why if you're doing a lot of ECMs um, during the peak times, it's actually better to have um, a rate structure that charges you more for the peak because you're reducing that peak. Okay, so let's look at some other observations. So if we look at these two numbers, um, these two numbers are exactly the same, and these two numbers are exactly the same. And we actually, for the outdoor light reduction, we guessed that we didn't get any peak reduction, and we didn't. So when we guess correctly about when our peak occurs, method two and method number three give the exact same answer. So um, that's really good when we're able to guess correctly. Now, we didn't really, um, if we use the blended rate though in this calculation, um, and we didn't reduce the peak as, as in case of the outdoor light, our cost savings calculations can be just ridiculously off. So look at these two. These two are actually 283% off. Um, these two aren't that far off, but that's why you want to be really careful and never use the blended rate because you can get some drastically different things. So it's it's tough though because if you're doing an ECM, sometimes you might be, um, you know, really forced into trying to use a blended rate because this could make it look more attractive um, to the customer because they're saving a lot more if you use the blended rate. But just be really careful because um, you know you don't want to you don't want to sell the customer that they're going to save thirteen hundred on their bill and they're only and they only end up saving three hundred fifty seven. That's just not ethical and not right. So you want to make sure that you really um, try to calculate this the best way possible for your customer. Okay, so now let's um, look at up here. So in this case, the peak is not always where we guessed it. So the blended rate gives a better estimate um, than the, um, the method number two. So we do really need to be careful that if we have something like that occurs just a portion of midday, we probably want to really be careful about the estimates that we use. Um, and maybe we want to, if we have interval data, um, just take the time to calculate it in Excel. Um, and you can sort of remember that if if we use method number two, all of these bars, what we're assuming is all of these blue bars go up to five kilowatts. That's where these method number two calculations come from. So in general, hopefully that you what you get from this is that um, it's best if you have interval data, which most buildings do now, to go ahead and do the real calculation with the interval data instead of um, estimating. Um, because that's really going to give you the best estimate of your building cost savings. And thanks for listening.